Another aspect of the apparently quite multifaceted and complex quest to stop American democracy from functioning and to provide a second Trump a presidential term has now been revealed. And that is that back you know, after the election, but before inauguration as part of the electoral college process, there's this thing where governors have to sign what are called certificates of ascertainment, which is basically showing that the slate of electors are the legitimate electors and you know, various <laughs> Apologies, various uh, state officials sign off on it and say, we've looked into this, it's right, good. Well, there were a bunch of fake ones. Allies of Donald Trump's in a number of different states just made up their own certificates of ascertainment, um, which had lists of supposed electors that were not electors. And then they just signed these forged fake things and wanted to use it as a part of their uh, alternate slate of elector strategy, which we've talked about previously. So uh, these were made by uh, Trump supporters in Arizona, Georgia, Michigan, New Mexico, Nevada, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin. All independently though, it's not like they were talking to Trump or anything, right? I guess they just all came up with this idea. And uh, they've got the signatures of Trump supporters who claim to be the rightful electors. Those rogue slates of electors didn't have the backing of any elected officials in the seven states, no governors or secretaries of state or anything. But you can see, we'll show you a picture here of one of them. This is just a forged document designed to stop American democracy from functioning. And so look, the, the most I think damning part of this is that one of these groups in Arizona apparently put this thing together after some sort of day long meeting in Phoenix with Rudy Giuliani. Now that does not prove that Rudy Giuliani knew about this or encouraged them to do it. But they're like, while they remain randos, they're not the most random randos. They're the sorts of people on the right that were meeting with the legal team for Donald Trump at this point. Caroline, what do you think about this uh, this strategy, this, this thing? Yeah, your your last point is very important because while they may not, you know, they don't hold elected office, people don't really know them. They're not like completely random people. They, you know, studied the intricacies of what, you know, the electoral college demands after the election to certify it. So a lot of work went into this. And all of this is so insane to me as we were are dealing with the Voting Rights Act that is completely going to stall in Congress where Democrats want things like election day being a federal holiday and same day voter registration. Whereas the right is mm -hmm. incensed that there could have been one fraudulent vote in the election. So their whole thing is that there are um, you know, undocumented people voting, the election fraud, blah, 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 blah. Meanwhile, they are making up fake documents with fake signatures, all, like just entire things to overthrow an election. And these are the same people who want to throw people in jail. I mean, remember the case of the Texas woman who was on parole and cast a vote, not knowing that she wasn't allowed to cast a vote and was sentenced to five years in prison in Texas. And yet mm -hmm. the same party is just going to such an insane lengths to under undermine a democratic election. It, it doesn't make sense on the one hand, they're saying, no, we can't have elections. Day off, like no, you, you have to have you know really strict ID requirements, and then they're turning a blind eye to people forging documents, sending them to what is it the was it the National Archives, the National Archives, or yeah. wherever they send, the, yeah, the National Art, yeah, where they send these votes to. It's 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 insane, and of course the Republican Party isn't going to you know come out and say anything about this. It'll just be like oh these fringe whatever, but it's. It's just unfathomable. It really yeah. is. Well, and and here's the thing that scares me even more is that uh, you know we can take some solace in the fact that no secretaries of state or governors signed on to these things. So are we expecting that the next time they try to do this, they won't? I mean, there are multiple like people who literally participated in the insurrection on January 6th who are running to mm -hmm. become secretaries of state right mm -hmm. now. What do we mm -hmm. think those people are going to like do all that work? Then get into office and they have an opportunity to do this again, but mm, I'd probably get caught. I don't want to get in trouble or something. No, and and I think governors, many governors will have been so beaten into submission by Trump and his people that they might be willing. Maybe not, maybe not, 
But there's a reason they're running in all these elections and it's to make this sort of strategy more successful. It's not the only reason they wanna have these secretaries of state. Sure, they'd love to sign these things, but they'd also like to you know, strip polling places from certain locations where they think there might be more Democrats and run more sham audits, throw out votes that they don't like. And all of that is coming in the next mm-hmm. few elections. And I don't think that people are are appropriately terrified of that yet. Right, and if there's one thing that we need to take from this on the left, it's that, and, and we all know this, that Republicans historically have been incredibly diligent and focused on local um, municipal offices. And Democrats have been caught on our heels with this type of strategy and you know spending more time invested in like Senate and the presidential race. But we have to in 2024, we have to be disciplined at these local races, not only with just like running good candidates, but getting involved at that level. And um, because you're exactly right, this is what's going to happen. All of these people are, are, you know, in their own channels on the internet, really strategizing, and it could be yeah. the most insane, ridiculous thing, but it's still strategizing, and it really still does have the potential to work and get people into these offices that most people aren't paying attention to. And then before you know it, something like this could totally be pulled off. It's like we have to think of this not as a um, as a fluke, like crazy thing that they did, but as a legitimate strategy that they're testing out for future elections. I agree. Check out the Damage Report podcast each day, wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Casts or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want with a range of co-hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.